You can't explain driving this new Corvette. You've got a new engine, new transmission, you've got the mint engine. Um, there's a lot of a newness about this vehicle that makes it revolutionary. Let's do a once over of this once in a lifetime vehicle. First, some interior conveniences. We have the glove box, which locks when in valet mode. There's an accessory power outlet here under the glove box for cell phones and other chargeable accessories. The center console storage compartment can be accessed by pressing this button. USB and auxiliary ports are inside. This compartment locks with the car and in valet mode. The electric parking brake is located here and can always be activated even if the ignition is off. This is how you use the available lumbar adjustment and bolster adjustment. The available head-up display control is here to the left of the steering wheel. To pair a phone, use the infotainment screen and select the phone icon, then connect phone, add phone. Now from your phone's Bluetooth setting, select the name of the infotainment screen and follow the instructions. For NFC pairing information and more, see your infotainment system manual. Now for the doors. If you've got your key fob within three feet of the door handle, just grip and press the door handle touchpad. If the vehicle has lost battery power, you can open the door manually with a key. If you're inside the vehicle and power is lost, to open the door, pull up on the emergency door release handle located on the floor next to the door sill. Here's where you release the hatch or trunk. You can also use your key fob or press the release touchpad here when the vehicle is unlocked. To close it, you just pull part way with light force and it'll go the rest of the way on its own. You can open the hood with the release button when the vehicle is in park. You can also press twice on the remote key or locate the touchpad in the grill opening near the driver's side headlamp. Press it once to release the hood. With any of these approaches, you'll then need to lift the hood slightly until it automatically raises and holds. Opening the hood with no electrical power should only be done in an emergency. Then you'll use the manual release cable located by the brake pedal. The hood is not heavy enough to latch under its own weight. It will remain open until the striker is pushed into the latch. Firmly press down on the front edge of the hood until it clicks twice. To access the battery, first the right hand and left hand side shields need to be removed. Then remove the second cover assembly. If your Corvette isn't driven weakly or the battery is disconnected or drained, you may want to opt for the battery maintainer package. Just plug it into a standard electrical outlet and then into the under hood accessory power outlet. It's recommended to use a battery maintainer. And you just keep that connected while you have your vehicle stored. So there's no worries when you go to start your vehicle after it's been stored for weeks or months um, and you can hit the road. But if you don't have one and plan to use your Corvette infrequently, you can remove the negative cable from the battery to keep it from running down. When the battery power is restored, the windows will need to be indexed by cycling them up and holding up for a second. If you ever have a loss of power, see your owner's manual. Lastly, do not take your Corvette through an automatic car wash. Some car washes may damage the wide wheels and tires and aren't compatible with Corvette's ground clearance. The safest thing to do is to hand wash your brand new baby. Corvette hides access to its storage compartments for the hood, hatch, and door releases, all to retain a sculptural aerodynamic exterior surface. With the key fob within three feet of your Corvette, Press the touchpad below the driver's side grille opening below the headlamp. The hood release button twice on your key fob or interior button on the driver's side door panel to open the front cargo compartment. This area can fit an airline spec carry-on and a laptop bag for added convenience. Close the hood by pulling it down and setting the striker gently into the latch. Firmly press down on the front edge of the hood until the latch clicks twice. Open the hatch by pressing the touchpad above the license plate, hatch release button twice on your key fob, or interior button on the driver's side door panel. Here, you can store additional luggage, two sets of golf clubs, or Corvette's removable roof panel. Pull the hatch down lightly until the power latch feature activates, closing the trunk automatically. Open either door with the key fob on you and tap the touchpad tucked under the air inlet. Inside, a hidden button in front of the passenger seat reveals a generous glove box to store smaller items. Place your phone between the seats in Corvette's dedicated compartment with available wireless charging. Other storage areas in the center console, 
door panels, and center armrest make Corvette an ideal grand touring vehicle. With the vehicle on and in park, adjust the driver's seat, power outside mirrors, and steering wheel if equipped, and then press the set button. Release the button after a beep emanates. Immediately press and hold the one or two memory button until two beeps sound. Use the exit memory button instead to store seat and power steering column positions for more clearance when exiting the vehicle. Repeat these steps to set additional driver or passenger side memory seating positions. Tap settings on the center infotainment screen. Vehicle, seating position, and then seat entry or exit memory to further configure automatic seat movements to your liking. Recall any saved positions manually by pressing and holding the respective physical buttons on either the driver or passenger side, or automatically by linking one of the two remote keys. Match the remote key number displayed in the driver information center welcome message to the corresponding memory button when storing memory settings for automatic seat entry and exit memory to work properly. For example, set remote two to memory seat number two. One remote has a chrome flag and the other has a black flag for easy identification outside of the vehicle. Carry the linked remote key to your Corvette to enable these automatic personalized settings on the next key on cycle. Touch, pinch, and swipe an app on the standard high definition eight inch diagonal touchscreen and Corvette's next generation infotainment system responds with immediacy. If equipped, touch the navigation icon to gain access to available connected navigation services such as real-time traffic, up-to-date points of interest, local fuel prices, and parking options. Predictive Navigation also learns your preferred routes and destinations to offered cater alerts utilizing OnStar, such as traffic on your route home. Plug in your compatible phone to utilize Corvette's standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay capabilities. Near Field Communication, or NFC, allows contactless communication between your compatible smartphone and Corvette, simplifying the Bluetooth pairing process. Place your phone with its screen facing out between the seats in Corvette's dedicated foam pocket with available wireless charging. The battery charging symbol will appear on the infotainment screen when charging. If not charging, remove the device for three seconds and rotate it 180 degrees before placing it in the pocket again. Multiple unique profiles offer a personalized experience, allowing adjustments for settings like radio presets display preferences, and downloaded apps. You can either link a user profile to a particular key fob or create many others for a higher level of customization. Throughout your vehicle's life cycle, you can download and update a wide array of apps developed specifically for in-vehicle use. Bose audio systems surround you and your passenger with a standard 10 speakers. An available 14-speaker Bose Performance Series audio system gains stainless steel speaker grills, adorned with a Corvette insignia on the center speaker, for a refined look. Corvette's driver-centric cockpit is packed with satisfying and easy-to-use controls. Press the engine start-stop button and awaken Corvette's 6.2-liter V8 beating heart. Pull up on reverse or drive, or press park, neutral, or manual to engage. The tactile feel and operation of the reverse and drive toggles allow you to keep your eyes on the road while shifting. Grab onto Corvette's race-inspired steering wheel and a variety of controls are at your fingertips. Press the press to talk button to answer an incoming call or to use natural voice recognition with the Bluetooth or OnStar system. Press and hold to activate Bluetooth voice recognition with Siri or Google Assistant with a paired compatible smartphone. Press the end call mute button just below it to end or decline a call or to mute unmute the speakers. If equipped, a heated steering wheel button will finish off this row of buttons. Rotate the right side thumb wheel or press the left or right arrows to go through the menus of the 12 inch digital instrument display. The thumb wheel can also be used to seek if the audio page is displayed. 
Below these controls lies volume and favorite station buttons that can be easily used while driving. Utilize the left side toggle and buttons to adjust cruise control settings. Press the prominent Z button to initiate Z mode, a customized experience catered to your driving preferences. Dial in Corvette's other driver modes by rotating the driver mode control knob on the center console. Three additional buttons reside in front of the driver mode control knob designated for traction and stability control, the available front lift system, and the available front curb view cameras. Corvette strategically wraps the driver with tactile controls to provide both a driver-centric and user-friendly cockpit. Three toggles and up to 14 buttons separate you from your passenger. Standard dual zone temperature toggles bookend Corvette's long strip of buttons. Tilt up or down at the top of the road to adjust the driver's side temperature or on the bottom toggle to adjust the passenger temperature. Press the sync button to set a consistent temperature for both zones. Just below or above each toggle resides available heated and ventilated seat options. Press either button toward the top of the road to adjust the driver's seat or bottom to regulate the passenger seat. A fan speed toggle switch lies at the center of all the climate controls, flanked by zone, circulation, and defrosting buttons. Press auto to allow Corvette to automatically regulate the fan speed and zone. Turn climate controls on or off with the power button just below the fan speed toggle switch. Corvette's standard 12 inch diagonal customizable instrument display and available head up display projects a variety of vehicle messages and information right in front of the driver to help keep their focus on the road ahead. Use the right side steering wheel controls to view the main menus. Press the left or right arrow to move between the display zones. Rotate the thumb wheel up or down to move through the menus. Trip computer, performance, audio, maintenance, options, and simplify. Press the thumb wheel to open a menu, select, or reset an item. Select Trip Computer to see trip information, fuel economy, a trip timer, and the current drive cycle. Initiate the performance menu and gain access to a zero to 60 timer, lap timer, and friction circle to show inertia being exerted on the vehicle. Select audio and the thumb wheel will act as a seat control to switch between stations and songs. Choose the maintenance menu to see oil and transmission fluid life available air filter, and engine life. Open the options menu and select display design to scroll through the different themes and gauge layouts, such as tour, sport, track, or weather. Press the thumb wheel to select a desired theme. Rotating the driver mode control knob will bring up specific themes linked to each drive mode. You can also configure your favorite theme to display during all drive modes or when activating Z mode. Choose Info Tile Selection from the Options menu to scroll through the available info tiles. Press the thumb wheel to select tiles you want to appear on the instrument cluster for a catered driving experience. Track Display offers four tiles, while other layouts offers two. Return to the main menu and select Simplify to engage a streamlined appearance, displaying only basic information. Project additional data on Corvette's windshield with the available head-up display, or HUD. Lift up or press down on the HUD button toggle left of the steering wheel to adjust the position of the image. Press the Info button to cycle through Tour, Sport, and Track display views. Lift up or press down on the Brightness button to brighten or dim the display. Hold down this button to turn off the display. Corvette offers up to five cameras and four different views. Tap the camera app on the center infotainment screen, available front camera button on the center console, or shift into reverse to launch Corvette's camera views. A row of icons sit low on the screen, giving you access to a wide array of viewpoints. The standard HD rear vision camera displays an image of the area behind the vehicle. Rear junction view displays a view that shows objects directly to the left and right of the back of the vehicle. 
Front overhead view electronically stitches images from the two front cameras to show an overhead view of your Corvette. Ideal for precise maneuvering and tight parking spots. Press the front camera button on the center console to also recall this view. Curved view camera displays a front top-down view at the top and the left and right front camera images on the bottom, enabling a better perspective on what's in front of your Corvette. Curved view will also initiate automatically when shifting from reverse to drive. Flip the switch on Corvette's available rear camera mirror to use it as a conventional rear view mirror or as a camera-based rear view mirror. Compared to a traditional inside rear view mirror, this rear view mirror display provides a wider, less obstructed field of view to assist when driving, changing lanes, and checking for vehicles and traffic conditions. Utilize the three buttons on the lower right-hand corner to adjust the zoom, brightness, and vertical tilt of the display. Tap the available Performance Data Recorder, or PDR, icon on the center infotainment screen to record high-definition video of your driving experience on or off the track. Capturing video, audio, and vehicle performance data, utilizing an additional camera in the windshield. Later, analyze the recorded session from the PDR in-vehicle app while in park, or by using the Cosword Toolbox software on your computer. Near Field Communication, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Bluetooth, all different ways you can seamlessly connect your smartphone to Corvette. Pair your phone to Corvette's Bluetooth by tapping on the phone icon on the center infotainment screen, and then add phone. Press the press to talk button and say pair phone to bring up this menu with your voice. From your phone's Bluetooth settings, select the name shown on the infotainment screen, follow the pairing instructions, and then the phone screen will appear when pairing is complete. Utilize Near Field Communication, or NFC, by unlocking your smartphone, enabling NFC, holding your phone next to the NFC icon above the volume knob, and then following the on-screen pairing instructions. To utilize Corvette's standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay capabilities, plug in the factory-provided USB cable into a USB data port. The respective icon will illuminate on the center infotainment screen. Tap the icon to bring life to some of your phone's content right on Corvette's touchscreen display. If your Corvette's power is lost or low, there are several ways to access your vehicle. Press the button on the side of the key fob to pull out the physical key. Insert the key into the backup key cylinder tucked under the air inlet behind the door handle to open the driver's side door. If you need to retrieve something from the cargo area, remove the rear license plate to access the second backup key lock cylinder. Insert the key to open the trunk. Locate the manual release cable loop in front and to the left of the brake pedal. Pull it two times to release the hood. Lift the hood slightly until the gas strut system automatically raises and holds the hood in position. Remove the left and right side shields in the underhood compartment to access the battery cow cover. Remove the cover to access battery terminals to jumpstart the vehicle. After power has been restored, reinstate automatic lowering and raising of the windows, or window indexing, by starting the vehicle, partially opening the window to be programmed, and then fully closing the window. Continue to hold up the window switch briefly after the window has closed. Fully open the window. Continue to hold down the window switch briefly after the window has opened. If you're inside the vehicle while the vehicle battery is weak or disconnected, pull the release handle on the floor near each door opening to open the door. Raise or lower Corvette Convertible's first ever retractable hardtop in about 16 seconds and while driving up to 30 miles per hour. Ensure the roof and tonneau cover are clear of any objects and the trunk is closed. Before lowering the top, start the vehicle and then press and hold the convertible top button on the driver's door. Windows will lower automatically, and a chime will sound when the top is completely lowered. Press the mid glass button on the driver's door to lower the rear window with the top up or down. Pull the same button to raise the rear window. Remotely lower the top by pressing and releasing the unlock button, and then pressing and holding the convertible top button on your key fob. 
Raise the tonneau cover by pressing the lock and then the convertible top button on the key fob. Ideal for oil and coolant checks or fillings. Raise the top by pulling and holding up the convertible top button on the driver's door. A chime will sound when the top is completely raised, offering added security and quietness while retaining Corvette's signature shape and beauty. Before removing Corvette's roof panel, shift into park. Lower both sun visors and windows. Turn the vehicle off and then set the parking brake. Open the rear hatch and remove any items that may interfere with proper storage of the roof panel. Three release handles detach the roof panel, two above the sun visors and one at the rear of the panel. Pull each front release handle outward to unlock. Then press the button on the front of the rear lever with one or two people Carefully lift the front edge of the roof panel up and forward. Once loose, grasp the center of the roof panel and lift it away from the vehicle. Conveniently store the roof panel in the rear of your Corvette with the interior facing forward and rear edge entering first. Position the rear pins into the lower receivers. Push each front corner of the panel forward until it clicks into the upper receivers. Before reinstalling the roof, Make sure both windows are down and the vehicle is in park with the parking brake engaged. Remove the roof from the cargo area by pulling toward the rear of the vehicle until it separates from the upper receivers. Carefully lift the roof panel out of the trunk and then lightly place the roof panel over the top of the vehicle. Align and fit the rear edges of the roof into the openings in the overhead weather strip. Gently lower the front edge of the roof panel to the front of the roof opening. Make sure the weather stripping on each side of the roof panel is under the panel and each front release handle is in the fully open position. Pull down and turn each front release handle inward and push back and up on the rear release handle to lock the panel back in place. Basic maintenance, in some ways, it's even easier than previous generations of Corvette. While the car is a, a mid-engine supercar, we want to make sure that um, cost of ownership and maintenance are not uh, supercar territory. Such a beautiful machine should be lovingly cared for. Oil changes and transmission fluid checks can be done by your dealer's trained service people. If you plan to do your own oil changes, you'll find Corvette was designed with easy access openings under the car for the oil drain and filter so the closeout panels do not need to be removed to do an oil change. New for the 2020 Corvette is a dry sump tank on the new LT2 engine. With this improved lubrication, we no longer require that the customer take the car to the dealer at 500 miles to do an oil change. Now your first scheduled maintenance will be at 7,500 miles. Factors including temperature, miles driven, and driving conditions can cause the fluid life to vary. The transmission filter must be changed during your first oil change. Transmission fluid should be changed at 45,000 miles. A computer indicates when to change the oil or transmission fluid. When that happens, it's best to have the work done as soon as possible. One of the best ways to take care of your new Corvette is to let your dealer help. The 2020 Corvette Stingray is a game changer. Your Corvette should walk before it runs. The first 200 miles are for breaking in your tires and brake linings. So drive at moderate speeds and avoid hard cornering and hard stops. During your first 500 miles, engine torque is limited in low gears. If you have a brand new gear and you're wearing it in uh, with excessive torque, you can create uh, wear patterns that are not ideal. Avoid full throttle starts, abrupt stops, and driving at constant speeds, including the use of cruise control. You shouldn't exceed 4,000 RPM, but if you do, don't downshift to brake or slow the vehicle. During your first 1,500 miles, you should check the engine oil every time you refuel and add oil if necessary. Oil and fuel consumption may be higher than normal during the braking period. Wait until you've passed 1,500 miles to participate in track or sport driving events of any kind. For more information, there are many resources available to you on Chevy.com and in your owner's manual. And once you've passed 1,500 miles, the break-in period is over. Be patient with it, and if you are, the car will be good for the rest of its life. It's a very comfortable touring car. 
It's a great back road carver, and of course it's a very, very potent track weapon for those that want to maximize the performance. The Z51 performance package is required for track events and competitive driving, and your vehicle may not be equipped with it. If it is, consult the track prep guide for more in-depth info. But here's an overview. First things first. Check fluid levels, of course, that's basic with any track preparation. We ask you to add two quarts of transmission fluid for some extra robustness and track durability. It is not required to remove the additional two quarts of dual clutch transmission fluid. Any transmission level set or change should be performed at your dealer and the transmission fluid and external filter should be changed after every 24 hours of track usage. After that, we ask that you uh, change the brake fluid to a high temperature, high boiling point brake fluid, 310 degrees C boiling point or higher. There is a brake fade warning assist system in place to help ensure safe driving conditions while track driving. Messages may appear advising you to reduce braking to avoid overheating or to have your brakes service. Follow all advice. New brake pads must be burnished before racing or other competitive driving. The two brake burnishing procedure options are spelled out in detail in your owner's manual and in the track prep guide. Replay and relive your best moments behind the wheel. Your Corvette may be equipped with a performance data recorder or PDR. There are a lot of do's and don'ts regarding when it's safe and legal to use the PDR. Refer to your owner's manual for those. We'll just be going over how to use it. You can record um, video, audio, the data from the car, speed, G-forces, accelerator, brake. You have a record of what you did. You can show your friends and really help yourself learn how to become a better driver. Insert a class 10 SD card that's 16 gigabytes or larger into the card reader in the glove box. And there's a PDR icon on the menu. Push that so you can keep recording until you're ready to stop and you hit the button to stop recording. Then you have it on that SD card. The recording must be stopped and the file closed before removing the SD card or the recording may be lost. Touch video overlay to display the menu screen. Touching preview provides a live preview of the overlay selected. Choose what information you want displayed over your video. None won't display data but that data is still available with the video when it's accessed in the toolbox software. Sport displays speed, RPM, current gear, left and right G-forces, and an event odometer. Track displays the same data as Sport, as well as a GPS tracking map for known routes, lap times, and more. The system can even learn tracks and circuits with your helm. Timing displays zero to 60 times and other speed and distance milestones, as well as lap timings and more. The recording of a driving session is adjustable. You can choose to record audio if you like, and you can set up automatic recording to begin whenever the vehicle is in the run power mode. You may also set it to record when the vehicle is in ballet mode for added peace of mind. It's a great tool, not just to brag to your friends about what you can do, but also teach you to be a better driver. So after you get back from the track, you can compare lap times, you can compare corner speeds. It's really a very powerful tool for making you a better driver and getting the most performance out of your Corvette. Viscosity is a virtue for your Corvette. Your best bet is to have your dealer handle maintenance, but this is a primer if you plan to handle it yourself. To check the oil on the 2020 Corvette, you will actually leave the engine running to do this. Just let it at idle. You wanna make sure that the engine's warm. You will walk back to the engine compartment Grab the dipstick, wipe it clean, reinsert it into the tube and pull it back out and compare it to the uh, hash marks on the dipstick. If the oil is below the cross hatched area, add a quarter of the recommended oil through the oil fill cap opening here, then recheck the level. For convertibles, press lock and the convertible top buttons on the key fob to open the tonneau and access the oil fill dipstick and coolant fill covers. Make sure the covers are sealed after use. Using engine oil approved to the proper specification and viscosity grade is crucial. To check your coolant, be sure the system is cool and that the vehicle is on a level surface. Check to see if coolant is visible in the coolant surge tank. If the coolant inside the coolant surge tank is boiling, do not do anything else until it cools down. If the coolant is low, add the precise mixture of 40% Dex cool coolant and 60% clean drinkable water or take the vehicle to your dealer for service. The wiper fluid reservoir is located here. If you'll be using your Corvette in temperatures that may fall below freezing, use a fluid that has sufficient protection against freezing. 
We've been walking you through things on this coupe, but a convertible is laid out a little bit differently. You check the oil here, the coolant here, and the wiper fluid is in the same place under the hood. We know that a lot of customers enjoy working on their cars and we try to make the Corvette no exception to that. Avoid the pain of an obstacle with the push of a button. Speed bumps, steep driveways, and more can be overcome with available front lift. If your vehicle is equipped with this available feature, be sure you're going no faster than 24 miles per hour. Front lift is an optional feature we have on this vehicle. It is a two-stage hydraulic lift where with the touch of a button, it will raise the front end of your car about two inches in under three seconds. Once you're over the obstacle, press the button to lower it, or it will lower on its own once you've exceeded 24 miles per hour or turn the vehicle off. The system can remember up to 1,000 locations using GPS navigation in the vehicle. During a driver requested front lift, use the four-way pad located on the steering wheel to remember or dismiss that location. The same four-way pad is used to delete a stored location. If you get the message lift system unavailable, it could be that a door or the hood is open or that you're driving faster than 24 miles per hour. It could also be that there were too many lift requests in a short period of time. And of course, all of this information and more can be found in your owner's manual. That's another example of what we've learned from customers. They say, you know, I, I like the looks of the car. I like the sportiness of it. I don't like when it scrapes when I go in my driveway. What can you do about it? And so that's something we did about it. Control is yours for the taking. Manual paddle shifting will give you full transmission control for your driving experience. With the vehicle in drive, press the M or manual mode switch on the center console. Use the paddles here and here on the steering wheel to manually upshift or downshift the transmission. Your current gear will be displayed on the instrument cluster or the head-up display if your Corvette is equipped with one. Hold the down paddle to shift multiple gears to the lowest available gear for maximum acceleration. The manual paddle shift system will not allow an upshift or a downshift if the vehicle speed is too fast or too slow, nor will it allow a start from any gear other than first gear. When in manual paddle shift mode, if upshifting does not occur when needed, the rev limiter will activate to protect the engine. To prevent damage to the powertrain, manual paddle downshifts to a lower gear cannot be done above certain speeds. It's going to just act just like a normal automatic transmission if you want it to. So if you just want to drive around town in heavy traffic or anything else, just use the automatic mode for drive. It's just going to act like a normal automatic transmission. If you want to drive more spirited, there is a manual mode that will sit there and hold the gears until you want to shift, and it'll act much more like a typical manual transmission would. Double paddle declutching allows the vehicle to temporarily disconnect the engine from the wheels, similar to neutral or engaging the clutch pedal on a conventional manual transmission. This feature is activated by pulling and holding both the plus and minus paddle at the same time while the vehicle is in reverse, drive, or manual mode. The vehicle will remain in this condition until both the plus paddle and minus paddle are released. I really like the double paddle declutch that just gives you the true feeling that you're still driving a manual sports car. If you really want to sidestep the clutch or anything else, if you want to rev the exhaust at a friend as you're driving by them, that gives you the, the nice feeling that you're still in the sports car. Let's talk about keeping your mid-engine masterpiece in mint condition. If your Corvette is equipped with these available features, they will work together to help you avoid incidents and reduce crash damage while driving, backing up, and parking. Some driver assistance features alert the driver of obstacles by beeping. Most settings can be turned on or off by going here to settings. Let's go over the assistance systems for parking and braking. First, the HD rear vision camera. When you shift into reverse, your infotainment display will show the area behind your vehicle as filmed from a camera above your license plate. Rear park assist helps you back up at low speeds. It beeps to let you know you're approaching a detected object and five beep sound when an object is very close. The available curb view camera is also for low speed, under eight mile per hour maneuvering. The infotainment screen displays a view of the area in front of the vehicle, including a top-down image and left and right images. The front cameras can be activated by the button in front of the driver mode selector. Buttons at the bottom of the screen here allow you to modify the view from the front cameras. If you go up to a 2LT or a 3LT, you can get rear cross traffic alert. It will warn you that there is traffic coming from both the left hand and the right hand side. 
Available side blind zone alert displays a warning symbol on the left or right side mirror when a moving vehicle is detected in that side blind zone area. Also, the symbol flashes as an extra warning if you turn your signal on in the direction of the detected vehicle. The available rear camera mirror provides a wider, less obstructed field of view than a traditional rear view mirror to assist when driving, changing lanes, and checking traffic conditions. This can be turned on and off here, and you can also press and release this button to select the brightness, tilt, or zoom feature adjustment. Well, we are committed to making a supercar, making the best performance car we can. We also want to make sure this vehicle is really safe. One of the great features about this car is that you're able to kind of make it your own. I don't have to, you know, mess around with my controls every time I get in the car. As I'm driving, oh, it doesn't feel right. I know when I get in that it's in the perfect location and I'm ready to go from A to B. Become as unforgettable to your Corvette as it is to you. It can learn to remember your comfort settings for the seat mirrors and steering wheel. The passenger seat has memory settings as well. There are two memory settings plus settings for exit positions. If your Corvette has an available memory package, then the seat entry memory can be accessed and saved through the vehicle personalization setting on your infotainment display. This way, there's no need to adjust your settings each time you drive. It will recognize you by one of the two included key fobs. So if I've set my entry seat to a certain location, it will recognize key fob one and it'll put the seat in my driver position. If my husband drives the car the next time, it'll recognize him as key fob two. It will put it in his driver preferred location. The owner's manual will walk you through how to set up and turn off seat entry memory if you need further assistance. Adjusting the side mirrors is done by using these buttons. This one for the driver's side, and this one for the passenger side. The arrows allow you to find your ideal mirror angles. When parking, you may want to fold your mirrors inward to prevent damage. Some vehicles require manual folding, while some have power folding mirrors. You press this button to fold the mirrors and press it again to unfold them. This can be set to fold automatically when locked or folded remotely with the fob by holding lock. When it comes to how you drive your Corvette, it's personal. Your Corvette comes standard with the driver mode selector. On the mode knob, you'll find the preset weather, tour, sport, and track modes, as well as my mode. Z mode is accessed by the steering wheel button. The mode you're in is displayed here on the driver information center. Let's touch on when and why you'd use these modes. Weather mode is specifically for driving on wet or icy surfaces. It is not intended for use when the vehicle is stuck in sand, mud, ice, snow, or gravel. Tour mode is your default setting for normal city and highway driving. Sport mode is for when road conditions or personal preference demand a more controlled response. Track mode is designed for track use and gives you maximum vehicle performance settings. I love the sport mode because it gives you kind of that edgy feel and response as you're driving. When you're on tour, it's a little bit more quiet, a little more calm. It's the mode that you want to start your car in at 4.30 in the morning so you're not waking up your neighbors. Um, but that sport mode will definitely wake up somebody. It's got a nice, wonderful sound to it that you know that you're driving a Corvette with lots of power. There's nothing you need to do for these four modes. But beyond those, there are two modes that allow you to customize nearly every component of driving. Those are Z-Mode, your ideal setting for spirited driving with more of a single-use application, and My-Mode, used to personalize everyday driving as it can be left set over ignition cycles. Let's start with Z-Mode. My favorite mode is the new Z-Mode. That allows you to go into the infotainment screen and set each parameter, and then can be activated with a simple push of the steering wheel button. You can personalize almost every aspect of your experience by configuring subsystems including engine sound, steering, powertrain, and brake response. You may also have available magnetic ride suspension. Z-Mode is set from the factory with a combination of sport and track settings. To activate Z-Mode, press the button here on the steering wheel. To deactivate, either select a different mode through the mode knob or press the Z-Mode button again, which will set it back to tour mode. My mode is very similar to Z-Mode, but lacks the powertrain configuring. It will let you home in on what feels best to you for everyday driving. My mode is set in tour settings from factory, but can be adjusted under settings on the center screen. Mode features will vary depending on your Corvette's equipment. 
Freedom is driving a Corvette with the top off. If you have a coupe, this is how you remove the roof panel. You may need help to do this. Be sure the car is parked and off with the parking brake set and the windows open. Lower both sun visors. Open the rear hatch and remove any items in the roof panel storage area. Then release the two handles on the front and the one handle on the rear of the roof panel like this. You simply lift it up and take it over the back and store it in. The roof should rest on the upper receivers. Ensure it's in place with a quick forward push. Reinstalling the roof panel is easier if you have help. You basically follow the same steps in reverse. Once it's positioned, check that the weather stripping on each side is under the panel. The front release handle should be fully open. Push the roof firmly downward to engage the pins. Lock all three handles in place and hook the rear handle's hook in the loop. Now for the convertible. You get the looks of a coupe, all the utility of a coupe, and the push button convenience of open air driving. Before opening the convertible top, remove all objects that may contact the convertible top when it's operated. The trunk must be closed. Start the vehicle or place it in accessory mode. When possible, operate the convertible top when the vehicle is stopped. Although the top can be operated while driving below 30 miles per hour, press and hold this button. The windows will automatically lower and the chime indicates that the convertible top is completely open. The convertible can be opened using the remote key, but it cannot be closed with it. To close the convertible top, take all the same precautions you did to open it. Early feedback from customers are very excited. We expect that once those get on the road and people get to see them up close, uh, we're going to have some converts from the coupe to the convertible.